My name is Oluwa Kumi Adedeji and this is THB, the happiest people on earth, the telecast program of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International Nigeria. I welcome you to the program today. I want you to please sit back again and listen to how God made his grace and his glory in the life of my guest. My guest by the grace of God is um, engineer Hamed Balugu Gamel. He's going to share of God's grace unto salvation, God's grace, God's comfort in the time of his trial, and what the Lord has done in his, in his life. Join me to welcome my guest on the program today, Engineer Gamel. You're welcome on the program. Thank you. Now, how did you come to love Jesus in your heart? What actually were the experiences that you went through that brought you so close to Jesus Christ? Yes, I had a lot of experience. As I say, I was born a Muslim, a practicing one, and then a uh, when I left the tertiary institutions, came down to Nigeria, I joined uh, one of the largest bottling plants in the world. And then along the way, I met a lady who became my wife. And she was a Christian. So, and I will see her going to church beautifully and coming home. So I decided, look, I will be taking her to church and drop her. And any time I drop her at the church, I will come back and be watching televisions. And coincidentally, I was watching a Christian television, NTA, and they were viewing a man from Joss who was preaching him. And then at the end of the preachings, he will ask one or two questions and send his address. So I will write him. I was then in, I was then sent to a Loring branch by my company. So I will write him, and then uh, he will reply. Send me a questionnaire on the Bible, and I will reply and post it back. And not knowing even the scriptures, I was making 96, 98 percent. So I was enjoying it. So anytime I came on weekends, I would drop my wife in the church, in the church, and then I would come home to relax again. Then one day, I decided to stop with her and attend the same service with her. And we were enjoying it. I didn't know that my parents were fuming about these things. They didn't like it. But I was enjoying. As soon as I started going to church, I found that I was prospering in the job in which I was doing. And then the trouble started. I had three beautiful daughters whom I cherished much. They were getting sick one another. And they were going to the hospital and we didn't know what to do. Someone advised that we should see a minister of God. Because there was, it was a spiritual problem. So we took it to a church at Songu. And then they decided to detain them and say they will pray for them on Friday, Saturday. We should come and pick them on Monday. Well, actually, I didn't know what you know, it was my wife who was it because she, she, she was a Christian. And then uh, we left them. On Monday, I left for the office, and suddenly they sent some people to me and said I should come back home immediately. By the time I got to the house, to the church, we lost two of them. Two of the three? Two of the three in the church. What could have happened? Is it the first? Is it uh, they were more treated? Nobody knew. But I took solace in God, even though I didn't know what I was doing. You know, but God was in control. And to favor me, I was living in the, in, in the next flat. There was an Anglican minister who understood everything spiritually. So he was coming home every evening to minister to us. The church where we lost the children who were coming, they were ministering to us. And we were having comfort in God. Then one day I rose up and asked God, you know, when I wanted to sleep, I said, God, these things I found myself doing, 
I don't understand. But if actually you are in this business, mm. this business of Christianity, take me to a place where I will be free from my parents and I will be able to serve you. A week after I was called at the head office and they said they want me to move to Abba, mm. where they have purchased a new plant and they found that I could bring the plant up. I never knew there was Holy Spirit. I never knew what is meant by being born again. But something inside my spirit said that is answer to your prayer. And I was posted to Abba. I was in the Crystal Park. Then one night, a group of missionaries came to minister. After dinner, I sat among them and I was listening. The white minister was actually prescribing the cause of attack and was mentioning what could have happened what, without even me knowing him, contacting him. Mm. So at the end of administrations, he went to the dining rooms and I went to sit with him. I told him I was also lodging in the same hotel. This is the situation. I came to Abba on transfer and I, I listened to what he was ministering. Mm -hmm. I never understood. And I told him my, all my experiences, what happened to me. Mm. And the first question he asked me whether I was born again. <laughs> and as a professional engineer, I told him I've never even heard that word, born again. It's all right. If I'm not born again, I will not even know what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so he left me. He called some of the officers. I didn't know they were officers of the full gospel businessmen fellowship. Mm. I happened to see, to remember Kulugum, uh, having to see Eweneke. Uh, okay. Well, it was when I was fully in, in the Holy, I mean, in the full gospel that I knew. Oh, these were the people I was seeing in Abba. Mm -hmm. And then they cancelled me and said I should be coming for that ministration. I knew I was there every Monday, religiously. Mm. And then one day they make an altar call. And I ask, what's the meaning of altar call? Mm. They say anyone who was not born again, anyone who is not born again mm. comes out and goes, oh, that could be my problem. So I came out and gave my life to Christ. Mm, yeah. And it was wonderful. And then I was attending religiously. And then after some time, they talk of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I came out and I was baptized. Before them, I was speaking in tongues. Mm. So I knew, wow, this is really sweet. Mm. This is good. Mm. Better than where I was coming. Mm. Mm. Because I could see it from the results. Mm. The plant was down completely, mm. but it was resurrected. Mm. The quality control was perfect. Mm. It was a plant everybody was talking about. Mm. Go to Abba and see what Engineer Gamel was doing. Mm. They were saying all these things. Mm. And then, uh, beautifully, one day in my hotel room, before I slept, I said, God, why should two of my children die in your house? The mm. church is your house. Mm. I've understood the meaning of the church. And then I slept up. I heard a voice under my bed. <laughs> say, my son, you will glorify me. Mm. I woke up from my bed and looked under my bed to find out whether someone was hiding, <laughs> speaking. Mm. So I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I kept quiet. You will glorify me. So any times I will walk, I will remember, you will glorify me. Mm. Glorify me. What's the meaning of glorify? It's all right. So after three years, I was posted back to Lagos mm. because the Lagos plant has been enlarging and they say I was the only engineer that could run that plant. So I came and as soon as I came, what I left, what I was doing about was what we started fellowship. I was in the airport hotel. I asked the reception whether they knew any group of men fellowshipping at the full gospel. They showed me they, all, they were always here. Mm. So I joined the full gospel businessmen fellowship when uh, Fola Agura was 
the president. Okay. Eworo was the vice president, mm. and uh, it was wonderful. Uh, lawyer was our director, Barista Wale Barista Wale Wale Lufo. Okay. and I was attending religiously, Bible studies and everything was going on for a new Yes, this is a real religion. This is what God has called me for. Then there was a usually yearly election. Mm. They had an election. And then uh, when they were taking the committee, well, uh, Aguda came in and brought a letter. He said, God said we should appoint you membership chairman. <laughs> I said, membership, what do I want to do? I said, you will be known, you know about all the membership chairman. I told him, look, I was one of the business engineers in Lagos. I'm running a plant that's supposed to produce 45, 50,000 cases a day. I will resume by 6 a.m. and I will not go home until 10 in the night. Mm. The company has given me everything. I live in a hotel, at whatever I wanted to do. The, the MD said he should leave me mm. if only the figures were coming. Then Fola told me that's what God has called you. So I went to God overnight to pray. Fola told me I should go and ask God. I picked the letter and show it to God. I saw an angel coming down, and then when I picked the paper from him, I look at it, it was John 15, 16. Mm. Mm. I've chosen you, you've not chosen me, I've chosen. ordained you. Yeah, I've ordained you. To go and bear fruit, and your fruit will have bright. So I said, God has chosen me. God's supposed to know me that I don't know anything <laughs> about that. Sanity, what is it? Mm. So I came back, the following meeting, I went to the president and asked for forgiveness. Mm, mm. Said because I know it's all right, no problem. So it was wonderful. My office was a meeting point for the executive at the full gospel in Ogba. Mm. We would discuss, we would do everything. So we would provide soft drinks for memberships and all this. And it, I was enjoying it. And then the plant picks up, mm. the Holy Spirit stepping. Mm. We were producing more than what the targeted plan. Mm. And then they say, yes, he has now seen an engineer who has seen everything. Mm. I will come in the morning, anoint the machines, speak to the machines, say, Holy Spirit, we need 55,000 cases today. This plant machine, three land, this machine is producing 20. This one is producing 15. This one is producing. And we will come the following day, we will see 55. So my project manager went and told my MD, he said, that engineer, he said, which? <laughs> <laughs> he said, what? He said, he speaks to the machines mm. and they listen to him and they is producing. So the MD said, leave him. Mm. I was left alone. Mm. My office was a meeting point for the fellowships mm. in the compound, mm. fellowships of the full gospel, the executive meeting. And it was wonderful. So my wife came and said, look, God, God will make her to have the children that she has lost. I was telling her there was no need because she has suffered so much uh, tensions and everything. So she took in, during the uh, giving birth of the one child, she, she also passed on. Mm. 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 And, uh, that's another shock. That's a, that was another shock. Well, but because this time the Holy Spirit has resided in me so much, the comfort was there, so I didn't lose sleep. Mm. I was still ministering. I wasn't even missing my fellowships. And then, so they were asking, look at the man who has lost his wife and he's still coming to the office to minister Christ to people and everything. It was all right. And I was enjoying it. So in the year 1997, I left the company. When I left the company, I asked God, what do you want me to do? We'll be right back on that. <laughs> We're going on a short break now. I'm sure you've heard him. He's telling you that it's possible for you to receive grace, to receive glory, and to receive comfort of God. He's going to share more about that. You know, he said he left the company. What actually happened? You know, he told you that he lost his wife. What actually happened? How did he get the comfort after the break? The Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International is a vast 
global movement of laymen, businessmen and professionals comprising millions of men being used mightily by God to bring this last great harvest through the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, the happiest people on earth. Welcome back on the program. The program is THP, the happiest people on earth. My name is Oluwa Kumi Adidiji. My guest on the program today is engineer Ahmed Balogun Gamea. You're welcome back on the program. Thank you. So in 1997, you left that bottling company. Oh, yes. So what then happened to you, sir? Well, when I left the company, I was doing a contract with them. Okay. They didn't, they, because they knew, they said it was a mistake for them to have made me to go mm. when I said I wanted to go. So a friend floated a company, and I was the technical director with a car and everything. So I was doing contracts, I was going up and down. Maduguri, Ilori, Port Harcourt, Ibadan. I was doing most of the engineering contracts. And I was successful. But it was not God's purpose for me. Mm. Mm. You're making money, but that, but that wasn't God's purpose yeah, for your God's life. God's purpose for me, because mm. I, I knew how much you were making. Mm. But at the end of the day, what comes to me mm. 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 was not sufficient. And I was saying, what could be now? And before that, I was, I was still attending a church. Then suddenly, a pastor saw a woman and said, look, I could not do this job without me having a wife in the house taking care of it. My intention was not to marry again. Mm. So I got married, that was the same October 1997. Mm. And then uh, I was traveling still about doing my business. I left the woman in the battle. And then the woman got conceived and gave birth to a baby girl. Well, I didn't take it serious. I didn't know God, I started to move the way he told me that I would glorify him. Then I left them. I was, I was in Port Harcourt doing a gas plant. Then one day I asked God, am I in the right place? Am I in the right place? Because I should make so much money that even when I was in work, then I went to God. I slept and I was hearing God telling me, Come here, walk. Walk. So I woke up from sleep. Come here, walk. I was arguing with him. I said, I'm walking. So it was W A L K. -K. And you are thinking you think that God is talking W O R K. K. Hmm. Say, I'm walking, God, I'm walking. Only I'm not making sufficient money I'm supposed to make, you know. Hmm. Then suddenly my spirit came to me and said, walk before me and mm, be mm, perfect. I said, mm, mm, I'm in the wrong place. Mm, mm, wrong place. Mm, Meanwhile, I've left Ogba chapter. Mm, all the Africa because I was chasing contracts. So I'm supposed to have been at the full gospel mm, doing one or two. Mm. And then doing my job, but I was not going to the fellowships, mm. I was just going to church occasionally. Mm. Mm. Because of money? Because of money. And the money was not actually coming? The money coming. was not coming. And uh, that's why I say I have grace, because God came to me and said, Gamma, walk! Mm. So I left everything, and I said, look, God, what do I do? All right, I'll come to Ibadan. I came to Ibadan, and I settled now, and I was searching for the full gospel office. Then I saw one at a Wurud and I decided to join. But meanwhile, my wife has given birth the second daughter. Mm, mm, mm. And as she was growing, I was experiencing, I was looking at some things in them. Their behavior, their fatness, the glory was just like the children I lost. Mm, mm, mm. Then it was when somebody came and looked at them and said, Ah, Game, all those children you lost, they, are, they, are, they have come back home. Mm. That was the time I remember God said, You will glorify me. I heard that voice again. I told you, You will glorify me. Mm. Mm. I knew. Because it's the same facial fatness. They come as they are. That's 
So one day one of them fell sick. Mm. Serious sickness. We didn't know what happened. I was in Lagos, so they sent for me. My wife has taken them to the to UCH. We were spending 1,400 Naira on antibiotics every day. We didn't know for seven days. So I told all my friends at the full gospel in Ogba. So they were praying. They were praying. Then one day, one of my senior sister daughter visited a girl at UCH. She was sleeping, a four-year-old girl. Because when I understood the Holy Spirit, at the age of two years, I was telling them, the person who is following them, is that they didn't understand, I said, it's the Holy Spirit is monitoring them. In case anybody wants to do them anything, the Holy Spirit will pounce on it. Mm. So the four-year-old girl has masterminded that. So when my senior, the, the daughter of my senior sister came there, and she took a look at the daughter on the hospital, my daughter on the hospital bed. My daughter woke up from sleep, mm. four year old girl, and took a look at her straight and said, If you look at me again, I will go to the church and take the Holy Spirit and blind your two eyes. Mm. The four year old girl. A four year old girl. Told the woman in the Told the woman, told the woman, told mm. my senior sister's daughter. Okay, that's your niece. My niece. Mm. If you look at me again, everybody, so many people are there coming there. Why is it particular on this mm, guy? Mm. If you look at me again, I'll go to the church and take the Holy Spirit and blind your two eyes. Mm. Ah. Then my senior sister daughter, my enemy, my yaw, roar, or will lay. That was it. She never came back to the hospital. Mm. And then we were just praying. We were praying. We were praying. Suddenly, my senior brother's wife died. Ah. And I was told that your senior brother has lost his wife. I said, where? They say in, see, they brought her from Shaki to Ibadan. As soon as she lost, she died, my daughter began to get well. Mm. Mm. The doctor said, this miracle mm. was going to happen. Well, the girl was discharged from the hospital. We're going to go on on another episode of this program. I'm sure you have more to say. Of course, fitness in your life. How did you come out of the shock? Losing two children. No, losing three and then losing your wife. We're going to come back. But as we close this program today, my audience at home, you've heard what God can do. God is gracious. In fact, the scripture says he's plenteous in, in, in grace. His grace is abundant. And that grace can come into your own life also. And, but the way that God is going to release His grace into your life is if you become His child, if your life is connected to Him, He will then do wonderful things with your life. I want to give you an opportunity today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You heard my guess. He never knew that there's something that God wants from him to be born again. Not until he saw the need. And from that point, everything about his life changed. Won't you connect your whole life to Jesus today and be born again? That is, give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him become your Lord and your Master. Bow your heart where you are. And listen again. And say these things after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you today. I have heard that I need you also in my life. I open my heart. I ask you to come in. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my Redeemer. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the power to become a child of God and to live the new life. Lord God, let my life be controlled by your life from now. Forgive me of my sins, iniquity, and of my unrighteousness. Let your power be at work in me as from today. In Jesus' name, amen. What a wonderful prayer you have just said. That's what we call the prayer of salvation. Your life is secured in Jesus now. The life of God has come into your own life now. But you see, you cannot just leave it like that. There is need for you to grow in grace. There is need for you to understand what you have just done. And so write us. We'll begin to pray for you. We're going to send you literature 
that will make you to understand the situation you've taken today. We have one particular literature that will come now that you have received Christ. In that pamphlet, you'll come to understand 12 things. Four things that God wants you to know, four things that God wants you to have, and four things that God wants you to do now. We're going to send it to you free. And after that, we're going to give you another literature that is called the Christian life is exciting. Christian life is indeed exciting. You heard my guest say so. And so your life also will be exciting in Jesus' name. You're going to see our address at the end of the program. Just walk into any of our chapters and then tell the person, I want to serve Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Or go to any Bible-believing church around your area. Tell the pastor, I've just committed my heart to Jesus. I want to know more of Jesus. I'm sure one day you're going to be my guest to share of God's faithfulness in your life. It's going to be great in your life. I want to sincerely thank you for coming on this program. Next week, I'm sure you'll be on again. The guests will want to listen more about this grace in your life. I want to pray with everybody. Father, thank you, Lord, for as many as have listened to your son, Nigeria Gamel, about your grace and glory in his life. I'm asking, Lord, that you release the same grace and glory to everyone that has heard me today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See you again next week. Same station. Bye and God bless you. I'm sure you have been blessed today. If you just made a decision for Jesus Christ, why don't you write to us? And we shall send you a free copy of our booklet, Now That You Have Received Christ. And should you want to be a part of our worldwide fellowship of businessmen and women, contact us.